Great. So the first question, this is a great question to start off with. Uh, how do you recommend an actor gets personality across in this new Zoom self-tape future? I always do great and have a high success rate in the in-person auditions with personality and confidence, but I'm worried about my personality not getting in on self-tapes. Can we add personality slates to help with that? Yeah, I think you can add personality slates, but I think this whole approach that I'm talking about is about this. It's about bringing the personality to bear in the actual audition. And what you can do in the slates is what I encourage actors to do when they walk into the room, which is to also have an action that you're playing in the room with the CDs. Meaning when I'm dealing with the CD assistant or anyone in the office, as soon as I come into office world, or if I'm doing a slate, what I wanna do, the action I often choose is let them know they're in good hands. That's what I'm doing. I'm letting them know they're in good hands. And I have an as if for that and everything, and that's what I'm doing until I actually do my audition. Because again, most actors, I think either with slates or with walking to the room can begin to go into a neurotic tailspin because I'm doing the slate and I'm like, hey, I'm wanting to show my personality in this slate. So I'm Greg and I was born in Lakeland, Florida where their rednecks are, but I'm not a redneck anymore or I once was. And if you're a redneck, I like it anyway. Yeah, it gets crazy, right? But if we're letting them know they're in good hands, right? Then I can just go, hey, my name is Greg Sims. I'm five, ten and a half, to be honest, is what I truly am. Uh, excited to do the scene for you here right now and jump in. My agent is Blooty Blooty. Uh, here we go. Whatever, right? Or if I go into the room, it's like, Greg, you got any questions? No, I think I got a really good take on it. Why don't we just give it a whirl if, if uh, you guys are, are ready? And if they're being charming with me or you wouldn't want to talk, again, that's all encompassed in me trying to let them know they're in good hands. But most actors, I think don't know what they're what they're doing in the actual audition, and they they don't know what they're doing when they walk in the room. But again, as you saw, I think real moments of for people in in these auditions today, when you're bringing your own personality to bear, it it, it begin the personality comes across in the screen because the you know the, the the barrier of like oh this character that I'm presenting and trying to get right is gone. And suddenly it's me really trying to do something to the person. And even the idea of what's supposed to be right about the frame and everything gets shattered and that's good, okay? So hopefully that was helpful. Genius, someone wrote, God bless you. Thank you for that. Fear the fear, can you explain more? Um, well, I think I, I hopefully did, but, but fear the fear, uh, I think, and maybe what this person was, was referencing earlier is that, Again, I think, and, and I think it was earlier on they put this question, but without being fully conscious of it, most actors don't want to even work on the audition because they're afraid of the fear that's gonna come up. Like, I'm gonna get obsessive, I'm gonna get weird, my wife's gonna wanna kill me because I'm gonna lock myself in a room for three days and pretend I'm working when I'm really just fantasizing and watching Netflix. Uh, we just, we fear the trigger experience. And so this way of working both with like going after the action in the audition and pre-audition, what we're doing with this approach is going, bring on the dragon, bring up the dragon. I got to face the dragon. The dragon ain't real, he's going to feel real, but I can work with it. I can do this webinar, even though I have massive insecure thoughts. Believe me, I've had massive insecure thoughts and insecure feelings throughout this whole webinar. I always do when I, when I give live talks or these talks, but I am perfectly just keep acting through. I even have one client of mine that she recently put on her wall, like something like bring the fucking dragon on right? Because what the actor wants is what so many people want, what we all naturally want, right? We want to go, can't I get the gold without facing the dragon? Isn't there a way around it? Isn't there a way not to feel the old belief energy, not to face my own neurosis, my own powerlessness? Isn't and a lot of acting teachers, coaches, self-help people are trying to cheat us, whether they're conscious of it or not. And we fall for it because we want to be gods and we're not but we want to go, please, isn't there a way to not have to face my shit and create something? But there's not. So by taking that tag and admitting that you're neurotic, admitting that, man, I'm attached to this, I can acknowledge that, I can own it, I can own the fear, I can own the shame, I can own the self-hatred and do something else, act through it. That creates the empowering audition. You know, Watching a real human being actually keep getting again sucked up by the shit that wants to pull them in 
but they keep coming back to trying to comfort a loved one and they keep coming back to the reader. And I know, oh, what's the CD think of this? Nope, I'm gonna keep coming back to comforting the loved one and I'm gonna keep doing that. That's what creates the mesmerizing scene. Not like, I'm gonna hide behind my idea of character. I'm gonna be the cop. Here, let me, here's the cop. I'm a tough cop. I'm good, dude, confess just, and I'm behind this, just losing my shit, hoping it goes well, <laughs> right? We want to see the person losing their shit, but keep coming back to the thing. Yeah, so someone wrote, you know, um, my block happened in my 40s um, when I had a bad orthodontic treatment uh, that resulted in getting veneers uh, to repair my smile. I had great confidence, but a few crooked big white teeth. Now I'm self-conscious about my fake teeth and change profile. I'm now 63, I have fear. Of course, it makes such sense. I have fear about my teeth. You know, I have fear about my face. I have fear about like, why am I not as good looking as the guy I went to college with who's a movie star right now? Like why, you know, we all have it, whether it's about the veneers or about childhood wounds or about whatever. Um, and so I think a lot of these questions came earlier in the process. So hopefully what I said is so helpful. Uh, hopefully it's helpful. So yes, whatever the fear is, it's, oh my God, I just fear that I, I don't look right. And now it's making me self-conscious. Well, again, getting to that old belief. And often again, like I said, it's something deeper than we realize. Usually it's something like, oh God, if this doesn't work out, I'm going to be lost as a person. And that's not the case. Do you know what I mean? That's not the case. So yeah, for me, you know, the example I often give is like, I may, I may never book another acting job again. That could happen to me. Um, and not that I believe this happens, but it's like, let's say somehow like, you know, let's say the reason I never booked a job was that like, you know, hey, Greg, no one, you'll never know this, but the reason you stopped booking an acting job was because like at around the age of 49, something, you know, sleeming, you could even notice it, but your nose and your jaw, because of that jaw surgery you had years ago, something shifted in the alignment of your face. And no one ever notices, except on camera, there's something unconsciously repellent a little bit about your face. So that's why you never got another audition. And you can never know that, but that's why. Like, that may be the case. I have no power to, to book the job or to know why I won't book the job. But if I keep facing those fears and understanding that even it, it doesn't make any real difference whether I'm an actor, a waiter, a lion tamer, you know, or, or a salesperson. I mean, of course it does to a certain extent, but in regard to me having a meaningful life, that's not what matters. If I, I believe, if I am perfectly moved towards certain principles, I will be guided and I will have a meaningful life beyond measure, independent of what I'm doing for a living. So I need to face that stuff and own all that emotional, psychological baggage and just act through it. And like I said earlier, I may book the part or I may never book a part again, but if I'm approaching it this way, I'm going to be led. I am going to be led. Hopefully that, that was helpful. Good. Someone said, <laughs> I had a technical question. Please disregard my question. What you provided is far more valuable. Good. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. And that's, that's a, a thing about just like technical stuff. And again, I can answer some technical questions, but whether it's technical questions of the self tape or the technical rules about auditioning, whether on tape or in the room, that's often the trap. It, and it's not just with the actor, it's with all people and it's with all of us in life, right? We're looking for the 12 magic things. That's why we, we buy the book and we take the course. Like, here's the way to get a new agent. Here's the way to book a breakthrough role. And of course, many of us have either done those things and they haven't worked or we're unable to do them because there's shit blocking us that we don't understand. But my experience is that no one can give you the magic path. And often we can think, my problem is if someone would just tell me the 12 ways to break in or the 12 ways to get better, I would just do those 12 things. That's not the problem. We're brilliant as human beings. We have brilliant minds. If you think about things you're not attached to, you don't need a course to come up with the 12 right moves. You just try shit and you learn from your own experience and you find your own path. So no one can tell you the 12 magic moves to book the audition because there are none. And you've got a unique path. I got a guy that I worked with that got his first agent 
went right out of college by somehow sneaking into, and I forget what agent it was, but it was like a big agent, like ICM back in the day or something, sneaking into the guy's office, sitting in his chair, putting his foot on the agent's table. And when the agent walked in saying, hey, my name is such and such, and I'm going to make you a shit ton of money. You should work with me. This is what he did. And the agent was like, are you kidding me? And cursed him out and said, get off my desk and was laughing and cursing at him. And was like, what the fuck? And they ended up having a conversation. And that was his first agent. He worked with him. And the agent was saying, he's like, I'm going to, you fascinate me. You got balls, kid, basically, something like that. I'm going to work with you, but never do that again. Never do that again. But it worked for him. Wouldn't work for me. <laughs> but there are things that have taken my acting, my writing, my directing career, things that have, have led to me becoming a coach, adopting my daughter, getting married, things that nobody could plan or tell me how to do, I had to discover. And if we understand the heart of the thing and what's preventing us from getting in touch with the heart of the thing, a lot of other stuff falls into place. That's what I find. Um, so someone said, uh, first off, thank you for doing this, Greg. Um, the Art of Living is a powerful book. Uh, another love, oh, she said another book I love and wanted to share with you if you haven't read it is Comfortable with Uncertainty by Pema Chodron. I love Pema Chodron. I'm so glad someone brought up Pema Chodron. I'm highly influenced by Pema Chodron. All my approaches are. I was a, I'm no longer a practicing Buddhist. I'm a practicing Catholic. I started off as a practicing Catholic. I was a practicing Buddhist for, for three or four years. Now I'm back to a practicing Catholic, but I'm highly influenced by Buddhism and most major religions. Um, but I love Pema Chodron. And one of my favorite quotes by Pema Chodron is, I am not okay. You are not okay. That is okay. And again, I think what the actor is falling into the trap of with the audition and off with their lives is like, I need to be okay. I need to be in the zone. How do I get in the zone for this audition? How do I fuck the zone? Fuck the zone. Pardon my language, but fuck the zone. You don't need to be in the zone. You're not okay. You're not going to feel okay. Accept that you're not feeling okay and do the thing anyway. Another great quote from Pema Chodron is in an interview, someone or her giving a talk, someone said to her, and she, for those of you who don't know, she's this Buddhist nun, this amazing, this American who became a, a Buddhist nun, and she writes these amazing books. Highly recommend them. But she gave a talk once, and someone said, Pema, you've been like meditating for 30 years. God knows how much time you actually spent on the cushion. What is the deepest wisdom you've garnered from meditation? Do you have any idea? And she said, I absolutely know what that is, without a doubt. The deepest and really only wisdom that I've garnered from meditation is my mind is really busy. And the person said, like, that's it? That's it? She said, that's it. She said, I'll make, I'll make one addition to that. I have much more compassion for that fact than I used to. I think that's what it's all about. I can't make myself believe. I can't get rid of the delusions like that. But I can accept them. I can accept, like everybody, I'm a deluded human being. I can't control my feelings. I feel scared and uncomfortable and you know my my trauma has been triggered okay but i can act as if what's true is true and that's stuff that the actors often that not okayness they were often trying to hide the audition behind the character that is, that's what they want to see whether they know it or not it's your not okayness that's what they want to see again didn't expect to get so moved but it's moving stuff for me because I just struggled with it for so long as a man and as an actor, woo, uh, trying to cover all this up. I don't need to cover it up. I don't need to manufacture it. And I don't need to cover it up. One of the greatest quotes I've ever heard about acting, which I believe it's from Sanford Meisner is invent nothing, deny nothing, invent nothing, deny nothing. Okay. Um, what you said about unconscious fear that stops us, from reaching out to people resonated with me. Uh, back in January, a director friend of mine sent an email to an agent he knows with my materials and let me know that agent responded and said that uh, though I wasn't the type they were looking for, I could reach out to him to chat. However, look, after looking up the agent and seeing that he had some high profile clients, I psyched myself out and kept making excuses about why not to give him a call. Even though there wasn't a risk, I created one in my mind. Is it too late? Should I let this go? Or is there a graceful way to reach out once the world starts back up again? Would this be an opportunity to be vulnerable at what actually happened? Yeah, great question. So yes, no, yes. Meaning, huh, 
absolutely you can reach back out. One of the most common old beliefs I think we find that we have is one false move is gonna destroy my life. Like this audition, if this audition goes well, I might win an Emmy. If it goes bad, I'll be crushed by regret and live a miserable life. So it's like, without realizing it, so many of us are going to auditions with the gun pointed at our head. It's like every audition, what I often say to students in class, it's like every audition becomes like an old Bruce Springsteen song. It's like, I got one last chance to make it real. I go, this is my last chance. I'm betting everything on black, everything. I either win this audition and I soar or I lose it and it, it doesn't go so well, right? So auditions are not this. Auditions aren't the last chance to make it real. And neither is getting back in touch with a friend to go like, hey, I never followed up on this, but I would love to. Things got crazy for me. Or to take the, to go like, ah, I got vulnerable about this. Or wh whatever option you choose, you can absolutely reach back out. And you can tag about it. And you can see that you probably have an old belief that the way I reach out or if I reach out is going to lead to me either getting something wonderful or losing something I need. And it's not. It's just a move. Mainly acting in life, I think, is not about making the right move. It's about making moves. We just do it. I, like I said before, like Harrison Ford as Indiana Jones, I'm making this up as I go along. We all are. I don't know what I'm going to say to you before I say it. We do this all day long. From a power that we don't understand, we're just communicating with each other and putting shit out there and something magical begins to happen. If I start thinking about what the next right word is to say, or if I think that the next sentence I say is going to make or break my life, it becomes very hard to talk, right? So make more imperfect choices.